Paul Dennett. I'm the Mayor of Salford and I lead on housing, homelessness and infrastructure in Greater Manchester. And Paul, you've been setting out the, I guess, sort of the expectations for the next four years in implementing homelessness across Greater Manchester. What are some of the key parts of that? So today we're launching our prevention strategy. And for me, you know, we've been doing a lot of work over the last, you know, four or five years, you know, tackling rough sleeping here in Greater Manchester. And what we've tried to do is really learn from how Greater Manchester has responded to the homelessness and rough sleeping crisis. And when I say Greater Manchester responded, it's, it's about the public sector working with the private sector, working with our amazing community and voluntary sector here in the city region. So all of that learning and you know, putting you know, lived experiences at the heart of our prevention strategy has been really, really important. But I think where we've got to now, you know, we've been walking around the city of Manchester this morning with Andy Burnham and, and Eleanor, and you know, we've noticed that the numbers of people sleeping rough on the streets of Greater Manchester is significantly down, but we still have people sleeping rough on the streets of Greater Manchester, which is, is scandalous, really, in one of the richest countries in, in the world. So for me, you know, where we're at now in Greater Manchester is we've done a lot of learning, we've responded to the crisis, we've got a good system in place at the moment, but how do we build on the successes of Bed Every Night or the Ethical Lettings Agency or, you know, Housing First, the Social Impact Bond, there's lots of things we can point to. How do we build on that to actually tackle um, homelessness and rough sleeping in the first place, so preventing it from happening? And that's the space we're in now. And now we're consulting with the people of Greater Manchester to work with us on how we do that. So this, for me, speaks across portfolios, really. It's about what's happening in the labour market in terms of low pay, insecure employment, part-time work when people want full-time hours. It's about what's happening in the housing market. You know, a lot of the, the homes that are being built coming through the planning system often aren't affordable. You know, property prices have done this and wages have stagnated. So how can we get some more truly affordable housing into Greater Manchester to tackle the housing crisis. So Greater Manchester leaders are committed to 50,000 affordable homes, 30,000 of those will be social rent or capped at the local housing allowance so people on housing benefit can access that stock. And you know that isn't in response to you know the right to buy which has seen you know over 95,000 homes in Greater Manchester uh, you know taken out of the equation. 40% of those we know from national data find their way into the private rented sector where we have real challenges with affordability and decency. So speaking to that agenda through the Good Landlord Scheme in Greater Manchester and building on that launch which we did prior to the local elections is absolutely where it's at. Also having conversations and lobbying government in terms of the space of welfare reform. You know we know at the moment the bedroom tax, you know, the fact that local housing allowance isn't in the 50th percentile of local market rents, and also, you know, the, the benefit cap, which is disproportionately having an impact on families and children. You know, all of this is creating a very precarious environment within which, you know, people and families find themselves in Greater Manchester. So it's about lobbying and influencing government in that space. And it's asking government, really, to work with us here in Greater Manchester to deliver on these, these ambitions moving forward. Is it a tricky balance to strike, you know, seeing the growth of centres like Manchester and making sure that people aren't left behind? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a tricky balance to strike. I mean, I think the moral and ethical argument in all of this wins out any day. You know, we've tried to put people at the heart of everything we've been doing over the last few years. And actually, I think it's incumbent upon people like myself and Mayor Burnham to use public office to properly tackle you know the causes of homelessness and rough sleeping and ensure that you know people are very much at the heart of what we're trying to do yes there's challenges in terms of the system in terms of the law you know when you look at the planning system the national planning policy framework where developer profits are seemingly prioritized over section 106 contributions and affordable housing delivery yeah and we have to lobby and campaign in that space there's no doubt about it but I think in Greater Manchester there's real unity across across the public, private, community and voluntary sector to put people at the heart of what we're trying to achieve here in Greater Manchester. And, you know, it's been Mayor Burnham's number one priority, tackling homelessness and rough sleeping. So I think it speaks for itself, really. And I think we've done some great things over the last few years. There's a lot of learning from that. You know, there's a lot more to be done, but we're now quickly moving into that space of prevention, which is, which is a different challenge, I think, as we move forward. Do you think Greater Manchester could be inspiration for other cities in the UK to look at on homelessness? Well, absolutely. Um, you know, we often say in Greater Manchester we do things differently, but 
you know, I think we have to look at this through the, through the lens of humility. You know, public office humbles you. It's a real honour and a privilege to hold public office. And yes, we've got great relationships in Greater Manchester. We do do things differently in some respects. But actually, you know, what about us working with other parts of the country to help and support them? You know, sometimes I think that kind of competitive rivalry, you know, gets in the way of making real progress. What we actually need across this country is more collaboration and cooperation to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping. Yes, we can learn from each other. Yes, people can learn from Greater Manchester. But, you know, we're here to help others. Because what is this about, ultimately? It's about people. It's about giving people the best start in life. It's about looking after them when they, you know, hit hard times. And it's about us all pulling together as one society and community to actually, you know, look after each other. Uh, the people that we still see sleeping out on the streets in Manchester and agree that it's a lot less than it was 12 months ago. Have these people just simply slipped through the net? So that's a really good question. So walking around today, it seems to me that some of those individuals are, are new to the street, which, which is a concern because obviously we've had the evictions ban, we've had the pre-action protocol, we've had, we've had bed every night, we've had all the initiatives that we've been doing in Greater Manchester. So it does feel like potentially those, those individuals have maybe slipped through the net. You know, what we need to do is go away and, and see if they're in the system, see if they have accommodation, see if they're known to services, and that work will start in earnest following the walkabout today. So, you know, hopefully, you know, towards the start of next week, we'll probably be in a much better position to understand if those individuals are known to services, if they have accommodation, or if they have slipped through the net. I don't think we can categorically say at this point in time off the back of the walkabout, but absolutely that work will be undertaken following today's walkabout. Paul, looking forward um, with, with regards to homelessness, where do you think we could be in sort of five, ten years down the line? So, five, ten years down the line, I want us to be doing what what happened after World War II. You know, councils up and down the country were empowered, they were resourced, and they were building council housing en masse. And in this country, homelessness was rendered statistically insignificant. And we need another one of those moments. We need government to make the funds available, we need them to work with local authorities, and we need to start building truly affordable housing. The market fundamentally has failed when it comes to building truly affordable housing. And we need government to work with us through their affordable homes programme with Homes England to properly deliver truly affordable housing for the people of Greater Manchester and the people of this country. And that is one of the reasons that we will tackle, in my opinion, homelessness and rough sleeping. Yes, it's more complex. Yes, it's about the labour market. Yes, it's about welfare reform. Yes, it's about 10 years of austerity, absolutely decimating services in local government, mental health services, drug and alcohol services. But actually, you know, one of the fundamental issues at the heart of this agenda is putting a roof over people's heads and having a place to call home. And government needs to get back to those days and start delivering truly affordable housing again. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks,